guys, it's Krista here. You're watching Books and Jams, and I bought some books. <laughs> April is the month around here for some library book sales, and I went to two different huge library book sales. One was fill a bag for five bucks, one was just massive, as well as a library sale shelf at some other libraries. I have about 35 books here to show you, so I'm not gonna talk for too long about any of them, but I will let you know what I've got. I'm super excited about so many of these, and I got some good deals. I had some credit at a used bookstore and got these ones for free. I got another Susanna Kearsley book called The Splendor Falls. I don't know anything about it, but I do know that I love Susanna Kearsley. Just the brief description at the top of this says, an ancient castle, a tragic love, and a web of secrets begins to unravel. If it's anything like her other books that I've read so far, I know that I will really enjoy it. I also picked up The Girl Who Came Home, which I've already read but do not own. This is by Hazel Gaynor, and it is a historical fiction about the Titanic. Thirdly that I picked up from that store is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which is one of my all-time favorite books, and I can't find it anywhere on my shelves. I think I must have let somebody borrow it and they never returned it. So I have no idea who has this book, but now I have another copy. If I end up finding the first one, I may have to give it away because this book is so spectacular. If you're not aware, this is a book that deals with a little boy whose mom is very ill and a tree kind of turns into this monster and comes and talks to him and tells him some stories and helps this boy kind of comes to grips with the grief and loss that he is dealing with as a young kid so heartbreaking and beautifully written and beautifully illustrated, kind of dark looking. It was a, a story that Patrick Ness wrote, but it was inspired by something, an idea from Shaban Dowd. So he took her idea and fleshed it out into a book, which is spectacular. Highly, highly recommend that one. I've divided my haul into these piles that I'm now surrounded by. I am going to kind of go through them by genre. So the first that I got, I know Jade from Bedtime Bookworm is doing a read along of this series. Shoot, and what's it called? It's not The Eye of the World. This is the first in this series by Robert Jordan. And now I can't, Wheel of Time. This is the first in the Wheel of Time series. Two of my brothers really love this series and a couple of my cousins have read through this series multiple times. I've never read it. I am not a huge, huge fantasy reader, but I'm getting more into fantasy. This book is massive. But when I saw that I could throw it in my bag for five bucks, I figured maybe someday I would want to start it. I think there are 17 or 18 books in the series. Robert Jordan actually passed away before the series ended and Brandon Sanderson wrote the last few books. So that's something to note. I do like Brandon Sanderson from what I've read so far. I don't know when I will ever get to this, but I have it now. My brothers can be very happy with me. <laughs> I have a few YA and children's books, I guess, middle grade. A couple years ago, picked up the whole series of unfortunate events at a yard sale for three bucks, but it was missing number 11. So I was thrilled when I saw number 11 sitting on the shelves at the library book sale and it's in really good condition. This one is The Grim Grotto. I have read through this whole series, but now I have a complete series. I also picked up a Newbery winner, Out of the Dust by Karen Hess. I believe this is an American historical fiction about the depression, the 1930s. I could be wrong about that. But I am picking up on Hannah Hart's books, Challenge to Read All the Newbery Winners. I don't think I'm gonna do it within 2018, but it's something that I would like to do. So why not own them if I can find them for cheap? I found a library copy of Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I would like to take off this glary plastic and keep this uh, in hardcover. This is by Benjamin Allier Sains. And I've heard lots and lots of praise for this book here on BookTube. I enjoy reading YA now and then and thought this might be a nice lighthearted read to read in between some heavier adult books that I have been reading. I also picked up number one in the Amulet graphic novel series. I read these just a few months ago and really enjoyed it, which is strange for me because I don't love graphic novels, but this one is in beautiful condition and again, throw it in the bag. For five bucks, I couldn't resist. My next pile is Christian fiction. I just have three of them and one of them is Christmas. Love Finds You at Home for Christmas. Two heartwarming stories by Annalisa Dottie and Glenn Ford Falconberry. So I got rid of the last handful of Christmas books that I had. I unhauled them. I do like to have a couple Christmas reads for Christmas time and these being short stories, I thought that that would be really sweet. There are usually some nice stories. I have a few other of the Love Finds You series and they're just sweet and happy 
types of stories. <laughs> I picked up Short Straw, Short Straw Bride by Karen Whitmire. I have a few other books by her. They're often set in the West and Christian kind of romance. Not anything that's going to blow my socks off, but enjoyable reads for something light and sweet. And finally, I picked up Dancing with Flyer... Dancing with Fireflies by Denise Hunter. Girly Girl Bookworm is convincing me more and more that I need to read some Denise Hunter. I've been sent a few of her books by the Fiction Guild, and so when I see them for super cheap or at a library book sale, I'm going to grab them when I see them because I have a feeling that she will be an author that I really enjoy. I have a few that are just, they didn't really fit in any other categories. The first is Don't Go by Lisa Scottaline. This is a about a man who is a soldier in Afghanistan leaving behind his wife and young daughter but then has to come back home because something happens to his wife. He learns some secrets about his wife as well so it's kind of a father-daughter story as he tries to bond with his young daughter that he doesn't know that well. So a bit of a family drama there and kind of a contemporary setting. I picked up Alice Hoffman's The Blue Diary is about a man named Ethan Ford who doesn't show up to work one day and apparently he has been running from his past for the last 13 years and it is catching up with him. So I don't really know anything about it but it does sound like it will have some magical realism elements to it and a little bit of a mystery in there as well. I picked up The History of Love by Nicole Krauss. I believe this is about a teenage girl who is tr trying to help her mom through some loneliness by helping her with a work that she's her mother is translating some someone's novel or letters or something and she tries to find the author the original author of these letters and so it leads her in lots of interesting directions. I did pick up one more Christmas book, Winter Street by Ellen Hildebrand. Again, I don't know anything about it, but I'm looking forward to having a few Christmas reads to read come December. My next pile is books that are inspired by authors or retellings of other books. The first one I have is Mr. Pip by Lloyd Jones. This is what the back of this one says. On a copper-rich tropical island shattered by war, where teachers have fled with almost everyone else, only one white man chooses to stay behind, the eccentric Mr. Watts, object of much curiosity and scorn, who sweeps out the ruined schoolhouse and begins to read to the children each day from Charles Dickens' classic, Great Expectations. It sounds like it will be a very sweet and interesting story. I didn't even know anything about this one, but it's called Pride, Prejudice, and Jasmine Field by Melissa Nathan. I didn't even read the back because it has to do with Pride and Prejudice, so I knew it was going into my Jane Austen pile. <laughs> this next one is called Juliet Immortal, a novel by Stacey J. And this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling in a way, except that they are both immortal. And so it follows Juliet as she tries to track down Romeo throughout the generations. And it's not because she loves him, it's because he is the one who killed her and she is trying to save other people from him now. So <laughs> it sounds like it will be a fun twist on Romeo and Juliet. I grabbed a Gregory Maguire book called Mirror Mirror, which is a Snow White retelling. And finally, in this category, Emily's Ghost by N Denise Giardina. And this is a novel of the Bronte sisters. And that's all I needed to know. I recently watched a movie on Netflix about the Bronte sisters and was enthralled by it. I thought that this one would be a good one. I have a few thrillers. The first is The Shadow of the Lions by Christopher Swan. And this I picked up because of this first paragraph on the back. A prestigious boys boarding school, a best friend's betrayal, a decade old mystery of a missing student. In this sharp literary thriller, Matthias Glass attempts to come to terms with the long ago disappearance of his prep school roommate and to become the man he is meant to be. I thought that that was intriguing enough to pick up. We shall see. A lot of people have been talking about Karen Slaughter recently, and so I saw two books by her and thought I would grab them, and one is called Criminal and the other is Pretty Girls. I am not going to be reading the synopsis of these because they are thrillers and I like to go as blind as can be, but I believe this one is the more recent one and a lot of people said that it was very thrilling, so... There you have it. The last two are kind of historical fiction too, so they're kind of good segues into that. But the first is The Girl from Venice by Martin Cruz Smith, and I believe this is a thriller that takes place in Italy at the end of World War II. I haven't read too many World War II books that take place in Italy, but add to that the thriller mystery component, and I feel like this one is gonna be super interesting. And I really love the cover. I love the almost silhouette with the night sky. Really pretty. And then I did a thing. <laughs> I always say that I am not going to read Stephen King because I read The Shining when I was way too young, but I did find this beautiful condition hardcover of 112263, 
which deals with the day JFK was assassinated. But it's Stephen King, so I'm sure there's going to be some twists and aspects of this book that will be a little different and twisted, probably. It's massive. It's so massive. So I don't know when I'll get to it, because I have a few other big books I'd like to get to this year, but maybe November, you know because it happened in November. Now on to my historical fiction pile. These are probably the ones I'm the most excited for because I always say historical fiction is my favorite. The first is a book that was published in 2017. It's called The Daughters of Ireland by Santa Montefiore. Montefiore, which is funny because it sounds this sounds so Italian, and yet this is all about girls from Ireland. It's about three unforgettable women and one unforgettable castle. I believe it will have some dual timelines. There are two different, I did notice at the beginning, there are two different family trees. We shall see. The next one is called The House at Tyneford by Tyneford by Natasha Solomons. Kristen Hanna blurb the front check one. Number two, it is fans of Downton Abbey and Kate Morton's The Forgotten Garden will absolutely adore the house at Tyneford. Yeah, how could I resist that? It's about a wealthy Jewish girl who lives in Vienna who has to abandon her home and she ends up going to work as a housemaid in a house in England. She strikes up a friendship with the son of the estate owners and that is kind of frowned upon by others. I'm not sure if it will be a romance but it has a lot of elements that I know that I will love. Anne Rinaldi writes YA historical fiction. This one is called An Acquaintance with Darkness. It has to do with uh, the time surrounding when Lincoln was assassinated. This one is the, a novel of Patrick Henry's family or Give Me Death and this happened here in Richmond so this should be pretty interesting. I picked up Dreamland Burning by Jennifer Latham and this is is a historical fiction set in two different timelines but the historical part happens during the Tulsa race riots in Oklahoma in 1921 and then in the present day timeline this girl finds a skeleton or part of a skeleton on her family's property so she wants to investigate what happened and who it is and all of that and it kind of leads her to learn some facts about the Tulsa race riots in 1921 so should be kind of interesting I've already read this next one it is out of the easy by Ruta Sepetys I now own all three of her books which I'm thrilled about because I just love her. Josie is the main character. She's kind of caught between the world that she knows in New Orleans and is familiar with, which is kind of like the underbelly of town, but also wanting to go to an elite college, but not having the pedigree and funds to do so. Just two more. I picked up The Orphan's Tale by Pam Jenoff. Just the real quick description says, a powerful novel of friendship set in a traveling circus during World War II. The Orphan's Tale introduces two extraordinary women and their harrowing stories of sacrifice and survival. It sounds like something that I would enjoy, so I thought I'd give it a chance for myself. And finally, I have another chunker of a book, and this is by Annie Barrows, who is one of the authors of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which is a little tiny book, so this one was a bit surprising. It's called The Truth According to Us, and this is about a young journalist who lives in West Virginia during the New Deal. So the 1930s, her family is encouraging her to write. The little description at the bottom says, a witty, wise, and exuberant novel. The Truth According to Us illuminates the power and perils of history and the rewards and sacrifices of true love, loyalty, and forgiveness. There you have it. I'm definitely not going to try to hold these up because there are so many. I would love to hear from you if you have read any of these books or if any sound super interesting to you. Go ahead and comment down below. I love chatting with you down there. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be coming back with another book haul before the end of April because I have a book outlet order coming in and I've received a few other things. <sighs> so many books! So little time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I look forward to chatting with you in another video very soon. Bye.